Hey, what's up everyone? Zero here, and I wanted to give you a little preview of what I've been working on with the uh, Sector Zero expansion. Uh, so one thing that we can do in Sector Zero that we couldn't do before is really crank up the system count. It takes a little bit longer to generate uh, a galaxy, and uh, you may notice uh, it will run a little bit slower if you have a slow PC, but if you have the PC to handle it, you can uh, do up to 400 star systems now, which uh, that's four times larger than we've had before. And uh, also there's just a lot more to see in this new galaxy. So um, I'm generating us uh, the largest size map and we'll take a peek around and see what we can find that's new. So the first thing you're gonna notice is we've got this uh, hex-based system here now. Uh, movement and everything still like kind of works the same as before, but you know, when we are looking around this massive galaxy, we'll see that everything is divided up into sectors. All right, so we've talked about um, there being uh, the sector system in our press releases, and this is how it works, all right? So right now I've got one sector. Uh, you can see this little panel here that I can go view uh, the planets that are in my own sector. And I can influence nearby sectors based on um, my ownership, all right? So I own so the solar system, and the sectors nearby to me will slowly come under my influence. And this is how you expand your borders in the Sector Zero system. Um, of course, you can also colonize new systems, and you can create deep space outposts, and I'll do a little bit of that. Um, one thing I'm going to do just for, I might not do this in a normal game, build a construction ship right away, but you might want to. It depends on what you find. So construction ships are used to build uh, deep space outposts now. And their, their functionality is really a lot different than um, what it was in the base game. Let's just poke around and, and see what we have in our general vicinity here. Uh, research lab. Nothing to colonize there. Let's keep going. The callus system? No. Nah. Can we make it? We can make it. So as you'll notice, um, see these sectors are, are lighting up as I'm coming into uh, into them. What you can see is that this represents the fact that I've explored these sectors. So my, uh, my exploration ship has a sensor range of one, and that is expressed, uh, in a, that, that's a range in sectors. Okay, so the sensor system has been overhauled so that uh, you have visibility of, of, you know, of things that are in range of your, uh, your ships. This is because it's got a, um, it's got a sensor array on it. The, uh, the colony ship here uh, has a sensor range of zero. So let me move it. If we move it up into this sector, uh, you'll see that, okay, go away. Uh, you'll see that it can only see stuff that's, at, that's in the same sector as it. So that's what a zero uh, means. And uh, when I move out of the sector, you'll see that um, it, okay, here's a good example. So these are now, these tiles here with the gray color means they've been explored, uh, but they're out of sensor range. So we haven't come across any uh, sector specials yet, but you'll see what it means to uh, explore and, under and understand these sectors uh, because at some point we're going to come across uh, things like Asteroid belts filled with uh, minerals or black holes, um, things that you can exploit out here. And now in this giant galaxy, uh, the density is probably a little bit less than you'll have in a smaller galaxy. So what I want to do to sh explore those uh, concepts is to load up a save game, and I can show them to you in a little bit more detail. Okay, so this is a game where it's been underway. This is only a 70 star uh, galaxy, but I've got a lot more going on here. I've discovered some sectors. So one thing you'll notice is that okay, all these I own, all these these sectors that are under my influence. These are the sectors under the Chuck influence, and then along here, you know, we're sort of battling for for influence. This this can change the ownership of these sectors. The only way that it uh, it is becomes firmly yours is to build a space station in there or to you know own the system there and you'll see that this means uh, this is a fortified sector it's mine forever uh, until someone blows up my space station whereas down here I'm still uh, influencing these sectors and um, 
Right now, my I've built a, a supply station here in this crystalline field, and I'm upgrading this supply station with a mining station upgrade that'll allow that'll uh, send resources to the nearest colony, which would be Rathi. Um, so if we go here into Ordaniac, we can also see. Let me move a, a dude over. You can see I can get a research bonus uh, from nearby uh, stations. Right, so I have a. A station here in the cusp of this black hole and I've built a, a science station upgrade to my supply station so that will funnel research back to the nearest colony. There's some other special uh, terrain features here like the the black hole um, slows you when you're nearby also the uh, the crystal in the field will slow down ships moving through it. All of, You might notice that all of my uh, supply stations also have this cantina upgrade uh, this is you know a new technology you can unlock that also funnels some income and approval rating uh, back to nearby colonies. Um, let's keep exploring a little bit. Oh, you know what? I was going to colonize this planet and refuel. Yeah, okay, let's see if we can pick a fight somewhere. I want to show you a new a new system for fighting. So down here we have nebulas. Nebulas uh, have different effects on combat to see. The, what are the blue nebulas? Will disrupt the functioning of energy shielding if combat occurs in there. And all of these tiles, by the way, they all have um, their own unique battle maps now. So if you do battle in this big blue asteroid field thing, you know that's what you're going to see, uh, or near the black hole, or up here. There's an ordnance depot that, if uh, if owned, will give you some bonuses empire wide. So this is just a handful of the stuff that's out there. There, there are a lot of different tile types, and uh, most of them require you to build a station to achieve maximum effect, uh, you know, to, to exploit them to their maximum. There's a lot of other little UI changes, um, mostly having to do with combat, and uh, there's a complete ground combat overhaul. I can show you how that work. Uh, let's see, don't I have a save game that I'm about to invade somewhere? Um, oh no, I don't. Sorry, we'll have to come back to that later. Uh, so this is this is what's going on with Sector Zero, and we've got, I'd say probably twenty-five to thirty new technologies. A lot of racial technologies. So each uh, each race has uh, two or three new racial technologies. There's a whole bunch of new technologies that are uh, involved in upgrading these space stations. Um, the you know th there's obviously a lot of new tactical choices. Uh, if I can turn on some cheats here, let me just cheat. Yeah, we can see that the the chook are out there expanding too. Like they uh, you know they're mining uh, their asteroid fields, and uh, the AI is concerned with building space stations and stuff too. So uh, eventually, um, you know, before this ships, one feature I want to add is to is to have them fortify their border with space stations. Um, you know, if you decide that you want to build, let's see, where's my space station down here? So this guy is done. Now what I could do is I can upgrade a, to a star base here. And when that's complete, any enemy, oh, my cheats are getting the hold of me because they all know about me now. Uh, any enemy that moves into a, a sector that you have fortified with a star base, they have to fight the star base to move through it. So what this means is that and like what I really wanted to do is I want to be able to build fortified borders uh, so that like the AI can take into account uh, like look it's got some natural borders with these nebulas that'll slow you down it could build like a, a string of space stations in between you and it and that'll allow it to both claim more territory because those space stations uh, add influence to nearby sectors but also it'll slow down the advance of, of players so there's a lot going on here um, and this is almost done Okay, I've got a lot of work to do uh, as far as I think polishing and making sure that the AI is up to snuff. But you know, you haven't seen um, or heard much from me on this lately, and um, just want you to let you know I'm, I'm working on it. So before I end this video, I actually want to show you two other little surprises. Uh, these are I want to show you some prototypes that I've been working on. Um, just to kind of show you where my heart is as far as what's coming up after Sector Zero. So let me load those programs up and we'll be right back. Okay, we're back. What you are looking at here is a prototype multiplayer game called Longsword. 
and we're in the map maker mode right now. And this whole map is made out of uh, tiles. Okay, this longsword is a tabletop tactics game. See this table, right? Everything is meant to be like a tabletop war game, kind of like hero scape. And you can uh, slap down tiles and make whatever kind of map you want. I've you know really tried to make it easy for players to create their own maps, and um, and then you can save them and share them online and everything. This is a multiplayer game. Uh, of course, there'll be a little bit of single player stuff, and. Uh, it's totally functional. I've played a few matches. Uh, I'm going to go into play mode here and show you how it works. Um, this kind of got it in a debug mode. Okay, so I'm, I'm drawing cards into my hand and I'm getting mana, all right? And uh, once I have like some cards that I want to play, I can drop them down at my nexus. And the goal is to destroy the, the enemy's nexus. Uh, so let's see, I've got, this is like my battle lord, so I'll drop him down and uh, there he is down on the, on the field. Now, uh, the, the interesting thing about Longsword, like I said, it's a tabletop game, is that uh, you can customize, the, you can you can paint all of these units, all right? Um, let me end the turn and get a few more cards and some stuff in my hands. So I don't know if I've actually gotten any that I've painted here, but yeah, okay. So th you can customize all the color. You can customize like the color of this guy's robe and the trim. You can color, customize the color of this guy's armor. And, and like the, the metal highlights, all right? So all of that you can paint in an editor. Um, and it's, it's not like paint with a brush, but it's like select a color. Really it's about army customization. Um, what else do I have? Yeah, okay, got this cool vampire lord. Maybe throw him down. I don't have enough mana, do I? We'll see. Let's chug in. Chug, chug, chug. There we go. Okay, so uh, the way it works is every unit has some action points. You get to move them across the board. Uh, normally, when I hit in turn, it would be the other guy's uh, turn to like move. Let's see, he's got uh, drain life attack. I wonder, did I leave it in that I can attack my own dudes? Yeah. yeah. So you can. There's all kinds of different skills that you can play with. Fireballs, and uh, this guy can like teleport. Uh, I think this battle lord is like a big battle leader. He's kind of like a hero, so you can do a charge. Um, I think I need to get get closer. Let's charge. Ugh. And then um, get a few more action points. He's got this like movery and powers his sword and will fucking kill you. Boom. Yeah, so uh, this is a tactics game and uh, I'm really excited to keep working on this concept. I, I'm gonna show it to my friends at uh, Iceberg Interactive and uh, any other publisher who's willing to listen, because I'd love to get funding and um, and move this concept forward after Sector Zero. Uh, but I've also got one other prototype I've been working on. Uh, it's a science fiction prototype, so I'm going to open that up next, and um, we'll go from there. All right. It's been a few hours. I had to squash some bugs in this build before it was ready to, to show off. This is uh, the second prototype I've been working on. It's um, it's called right now Project Proton. It's just a working title. It is a science fiction role playing game, and uh, I kind of want to bridge the gap between something like, well, like something like the feel of Firefly, but the gameplay in between uh, Baldur's Gate and Diablo. So it's, it's an action role playing game. Lots of like fast paced action, um, but also some like methodical sort of. Uh, lore building and exploration so like you know you can click around the the world to get some info about what's going on there'll be lots of NPC interaction um, so what you're seeing here is me just kind of like mocking in a lot of the game systems oh and by the way multiplayer I got working due to a great uh, multiplayer package available called Photon so I've got like awesome Steam and, and cloud integration right now um, let me kill a few dudes with my axe, and then we can... Oh, I got a little combat roll, so I can get away. I've got like a charge move. Let's see if I can... Yeah, that one stuns him. But uh, it's always better to use a laser rifle when you've got one. And there's some uh, really cool enemies I've been designing. Uh, this stuff is all very like, you know, this is this is just placeholder stuff. But I designed a, a big baddie, like a sort of level-ending baddie that we can get to in a minute.
So like, at, you know, right now it's all pretty bare bones, but there'll be like a loot system, you know, of course, like randomized loot is a, a huge part of these games and a big skill system. Lots of different skills. Um, I think that's really important in any role-playing game, obviously. You want to have replayability. I've got like six classes planned right now. Uh, I'm only planning to do humans, um, but this is going to live, I, I think it's going to live in the Star Drive universe. I'm not exactly sure just yet. But, um, so I, I might, like, put space bears in and stuff like that. there to be a lot of encounters um, with kind of like big badass dudes who could really mess you up if you're not careful. I really like that kind of Dark Souls, oop, uh, that Dark Souls style of uh, enemy engagement where you really have to think about how you're going to approach them. So this guy's got a few different moves to like keep you at bay, like stomp and he can st stuns you, throw a rock at you. Yeah, so that's uh, where this demo is going. Um, I have some kind of crazy ambitious plans for this, like maybe, I mean, right now the, the storyline here is that you've crash landed uh, on this, this planet, this like desert planet. Uh, it's actually a tidally locked planet and you're like on the day side. And uh, your goal initially is just to, to get off the planet. Um, I was thinking about kind of integrating some Star Drive like mechanics, like the flying around spaceships, doing a little trading and fighting and then uh, having you land on these planets. Now obviously this is a big game, it's going to take a lot of resources, um, but I've been able to really do this on a budget so far, it's, it hasn't really cost that much money. Uh, I've got like an armor system like under development right now so we can swap in you know new armor pieces and stuff for visual customization. And, and of course like the, the movement and the combat has got to be very tight, that is uh, absolutely critical to me. I think, it, I think it actually feels really good right now. And it feels really good in multiplayer, which I think is going to be big. Um, so this Project Proton, I think, is uh, is probably what I'm going to do after Sector Zero. I'm going to focus pretty heavily on getting this uh, getting this to market. And I'm going to talk to, like I said, my friends again at Iceberg Interactive. And I'll talk to a bunch of other people, whoever's interested. You know, what I want to do is, is fund this game and... Uh, and, and get it out there. Uh, it's already on Steam, so it's not like I have to worry about that. I, I, you know, I've, like I said, I've got it integrated with Steamworks and everything. So uh, what I really need to do is just iterate content, and once it's ready, I'll probably go early access. Uh, so yeah, I'm pretty happy with where things are at anyway uh, as we get into 2016. Uh, I'm excited about finishing Sector Zero off. I think it's going to be really cool, and you guys are going to like it. And then uh, my two new prototypes, I really want to bring those out to you too. Uh, so sometime this year, I think uh, Longsword, that uh, tabletop game, I'll probably just kind of release that for free, like a free-to-play type model where you can buy new units along the way if you want to support it. Uh, otherwise, you can just have fun with it. And then this game, Project Proton, when I decide what, you know, when it, it'll get a real name, and this will probably just be a, a you know, a buy-to-play to title. Um, so I'm looking to do something you know, just kind of like science fiction Diablo. Um, anyway, thanks for your time today, guys. And if there's girls out there, girls, uh, we'll see you again soon with a more in-depth update about some uh, specific Sector Zero mechanics. Until then, uh, thanks a lot.